Good morning everyone. In this lecture we will study about the solar pond. So firstly let me introduce you about the solar pond. What is solar pond? Solar pond is a body of water which can trap the heat or which can trap the solar energy and uh, it convert the solar energy into the thermal energy or uh, electricity right so if we talk about a solar pond there are different types of solar ponds like convective solar ponds and non convective solar ponds and uh, what is the difference between a solar pond and a natural pond why we can't trap the solar energy in a natural pond because there is a convective process in the natural ponds uh, in a natural pond there is a convective process means the water that is that is in the bottom layer that uh, it will heat due to the heat energy due to the solar energy it will be heat and due to the convective process this water heat, uh, hot water from the lower bottom will move towards the upper surface of the pond and uh, then it will evaporate to the environment due to the because of that the convective process the convective process means the hot water will come over the upper surface because the hot water is lighter in weight it will uh, come out on the outer surface then it will evaporate and all the heat will be lost in during the evaporation so these solar ponds are made so that we can use the solar energy we can use that solar heat and we can convert that heat into the thermal energy so now uh, from where we can get all of the energy for the solar pond that is the sun so sun is the largest source of renewable energy and it is available in all parts of the earth and uh, during the prehistoric times solar energy is used and uh, there are many developments has carried out in many uh, countries to exploit the solar energy very efficiently and uh, one of the most uh, recent form of the energy to trap the energy solar energy is through the solar ponds and so these solar ponds are large scale energy collectors and uh, this energy that is stored in solar ponds can be used for various applications such as process heating for water desalination for refrigeration for drying and for power generation now what is a solar pond solar pond it is a body of water it can collect the solar energy and it can also store the solar energy it warms the water inside the pond and uh, the temperature will rise uh, in the pond and the water will be warmed and uh, once it reaches the surface if uh, if we are talking about a natural pond then uh, warm it warms the water in the bottom layer and the, that uh, water from the bottom layer come to the upper surface because it is lighter in weight and all the heat is lost in the environment because of the evaporation and uh, colder water that is heavier in nature it will move from the upper surface to the lower surface and again it will replace the warm water and it will create a natural convective circulation that mixes the water and dissipates the heat right now you must understand that what is the convective circulation convective circulation means the hot water come on the upper surface it will loss due to the evaporation and the cold water that is present on the upper surface it will move downwards on the lower surface and there is a circulation of water that is a convective circulation so these solar ponds these are designed very efficiently so that it can reduce the convection or it can also reduce the evaporation and we can store the heat and it can be collected in a pond solar pond can store heat much more efficiently than the body of water of same size because of the salinity prevent conventional current so uh, what we use here we use saline water we use some salts so that because of the salts the water will be uh, heavier the hot water will also be heavier because of these salts and the that convec uh, convective circulation will be stopped 
and uh, that energy can be stored in the pond. Now, what is the working principle? Working principle here in this diagram, you can see that there are three layers the upper convective zone, non convective zone, and lower convective zone. So, in, in a solar pond, there are three zones, right? So, in the lower convective zone, where the salt concentration will be higher, we add salts because uh, if we want that our heat could not be lost then we have to add salts in the in this water body and all the salts we as these salts are very heavier in nature these will settle down in the lower surface right and in the lower surface the water will be hot because of the because sun rays are uh, entering in this body and uh, uh, in this lower convective zone, the water will be hot. And there is convective zone in both, in upper convective zone and the lower convective zone, that water will move from the lower surface to the upper, but it will not cross that non-convective zone. It will move ins inside that particular zone, that is the first zone and in, in the third zone, right? So in the lower zone, where the water will be heat because of the because of the sun rays falling on this and because of the salt concentration the the water will be the temperature will go up to 90 degrees celsius the second zone is intermediate gradient zone and it acts as a buffer between both upper convective zone and lower convective zone right and the third one is the lower convective zone it it has the highest salt concentration and the temperature will be highest in this zone only almost as thick as middle of the convective zone. this zone lower zone and the intermediate gradient zone is almost same thickness but the temperature will be higher in the lower zone and salt concentration will also be higher in the lower convective zone so to maintain a solar pond in non-equilibrium stationary state it is necessary to replace the amount of salt uh, that is transported by molecular diffusion from lower convective zone to upper convective zone. Uh, it means that salt must be added to the lower convective zone and fresh water must be added to the upper convective zone. Right? So, when the temperature rises, we can uh, remove that hot water along with the salts that, that is known as brine. We can remove the brine and uh, it can be replaced with the fresh water. Again, the salt will be added again the water will be heated and again we can uh, remove the brine and this brine can be used to uh, turn turbines and to produce electricity so the surface area of the pond affects the amount of solar energy it can collect right so um, how much uh, solar energy can be collected in uh, in a pond it only depends upon the surface area of the pond and uh, surface area should be darkened if, if there is dark surface at the bottom of the pond it increases the absorption uh, of the solar radiations and uh, salts like magnesium chloride sodium chloride or sodium nitro nitrate these are dissolved in this water and the concentration will be 20 to 30 percent and uh, this concentration is highest in the lower convective zone and uh, almost zero at the top now different types of solar ponds there are different types like uh, the first one is convective solar ponds and the other one is non convective solar pond in a convective solar pond we do not use any kind of salts right we but we prevent the evaporation in the convective solar pond so uh, in this type of solar pond we use uh, plastic blankets Right, plastic blankets are uh, this pond is covered with the plastic blanket, and uh, the lower surface or bottom uh, of the pond is covered with the black surface or black plastic sheet uh, can be used so that it can uh, absorb a maximum amount of solar energy and water can be heated. But the plastic blankets are. Uh, this water body is covered with the plastic blanket so that the evaporation can be controlled right so in this pond the water is heated because of the black surface and it will not, will not be lost because of uh, uh, the evaporation because this pond is covered with the plastic blankets so 
water will be heated and this water will be used this water will be uh, taken out of the pond and then will be used for generating electricity right and next one is the non convective solar ponds non convective solar pond that we have discussed in which there are three layers upper convective zone middle uh, non convective zone and the third one is lower convective zone and in this type of pond that is non convective solar ponds we need to add uh, salts right so main type of non convective ponds is salt gradient ponds we can also call them as salt gradient ponds so there are distinct layers of brines right so the lowest layer will be uh, will contain the maximum amount of brine then upper layer is the fresh water the salts commonly used are sodium chloride and magnesium chloride and these salts are settled down in the lower convective zone and dark colored material is also used so that it can absorb maximum heat or maximum solar energy so that uh, the water will be warmed quickly so in this convective solar ponds as sunlight enter the pond the water and the lining the black lining it will absorb the solar radiations right and when these solar radiations are absorbed by the water and all or the lining material then water near the bottom will be warm up to 93.3 degrees celsius right so the water on the bottom will be warmed up to more than 90 degrees celsius um, even when it become warmer the bottom layer remains denser than the upper layer uh, if we talk about uh, normal water when the water warm it becomes lighter and the cold water is heavier or cold water is denser but warm water is lighter and it will come on the upper surface but in this case this warm water will be will remain denser because of the salt concentration added in that zone right so this this salt concentration or this heaviness or this dense water it will inhibit the convection so uh, next uh, uh, when the water heat up to 90 degrees celsius then uh, then we can pump out the brine through the external heat exchanger right uh, that uh, some external heat exchanger or evaporator uh, is attached in the in that solar pond and the brine can be removed through the uh, heat exchanger another method of heat removal is to extract the heat with the heat transfer fluid as it is pumped through a heat exchanger placed on the bottom of the pond so heat can be removed by uh, tra by transferring the fluid in a heat exchanger so here in this figure we can say c there is a solar pond right solar pond and the solar radiations are falling on the solar pond and when these solar radiations fall on the solar pond then the water that is present in the lower layer where salt has added salt concentration is highest in the bottom layer in the bottom layer salt concentration is highest so and uh, it is also black tint or some black material is uh there so that it can absorb the solar radiations properly so when solar radiations are uh, fall on this water then the water on the bottom layer will be heated up to 90 degrees celsius and then there is a evaporator boiler that is blue in color evaporator boiler so that that heat hot water will be removed from the solar pond through a fluid or heat transfer then it will come to the evaporated boiler then in this boiler some uh, other source heat source is also entered then this water again heat and uh, uh, then uh, vapors will come out right and then it, these vapors may turn the turbine right will turn the turbine and then these turbines are uh, will uh, run the generator and this Uh, from this generator there is electrical power output so electricity can be produced and it can be used for different purposes so you can understand that uh, what is the purpose of solar pond from this solar pond 
hot water is taken out and then the steam from the boiler will turn the turbines and then the turbine is uh, uh, turbine will run the generator and from generator the electricity will be produced and uh, uh, some output will be given to this electricity so now what are the advantages of this solar panel uh, it is environment friendly energy and uh, it causes no pollution it, it doesn't pollute air it is renewable source of energy and uh, it can be used for many purposes such as generation of electricity for heating of fuels uh, for desalination right and there is no need of separate collector for this thermal storage system and there is low maintenance cost now you can see the applications of these solar ponds uh, in india there is a solar pond built uh, in 1993 through the ministry of non conventional energy sources and it was constructed at bhuj and this solar pond is about 6000 meters square and it is providing energy next uh, the largest operating solar pond for electricity generation is at uh, uh, is built at, built in israel and the pond is known as beach harava and uh, uh, it is built on an area of 2 lakh 10 thousand meters square and it is used to generate electricity or electrical output of 5 megawatts and the other example uh, is in US. It is built on 0.8 acre area and uh, this solar pond powering 20% of those whose cooperation operations in Paso, El Paso, Texas and it is the second largest in the US and it is also first ever salt gradient solar pond in the US. So these solar ponds are built in Israel, US, in India and uh, uh, these are providing different purposes for different purposes like for ge electricity generation right. so now conclusion to conclude we can say that this solar energy or solar pond technology has made tremendous progress in the last 15 years solar ponds can be effectively used as replacements in the industries that use fossil fuel to generate thermal energy and solar ponds can be used for process heating, for refrigeration, for water desalination, for production of magnesium chloride, bromine recovery from the bittern, enhancement of salt yield in salt farms, and it will be the future energy source. That's all about today's lecture. Thank you so much.